Dream music uh, is a 12-hour meditation, we're calling it, uh, on pitch, tone, volume, and uh, we are, it's going to be 12 hours of continuous music. Um, it's going to be uh, 16 artists. Um, it is going to be a, um, unlike other, any other concert that's been in this part of the world, um, and uh, it's going to be a endurance experience. And if I come here, mm -hmm. uh, what can I expect? expect? Well, expect to behave in a way that you would not ex behave at a normal rock concert. You're here to relax, you're here to get in, t in touch with yourself, you're here to be part of the environment, you're here to soak things in. You are just as important as the performer. That's one of the most important things about this whole thing. Is it's very democratic in the sense that everybody contributes their own sort of energy and their own feeling to the room. So the idea is you come in, you be comfortable, you don't need to feel that you need to be cool or that you need to figure out how to you know, take care of yourself. You're going to hear sustained tones. Drone music is uh, music that sort of centers around one tone or one pitch at a time. And it's found in every indigenous uh, music or traditional music, Swedish nickel harpa, the bagpipe, the didgeridoo, all this kind, we're not gonna have any didgeridoo though, mind you. Um, but, uh, and it can be encompass all genres from uh, sort of, you know, m very sort of vocal uh, angelic pop to uh, sort of darker, sort of guitar oriented uh, type material. Um, so it's a really varied, uh, what, 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 what is the common denominator is that it's a single sustained tone and it subtracts the time element of music. So it's not pop music in the sense that you've got a three minute, 30 second song. I mean, music is going to be played all the time. I mean, for 12 hours. It's going to be continuous, yeah. yeah. That is cool. Yeah. What does that mean? What, what does this tone, drone, mean to you? What, what does it mean, this genre? Uh, as a performer and as also as a listener, um, my sense of music was uh, very, very constrained. I was a pop musician and I was writing pop songs and felt very constrained by the uh, three minute and 30 second formula for writing a pop song and for experiencing music uh, in this way. And so in order to remove this sort of time pressure, um, and use this music uh, as a meditative uh, tool, which is what so many cultures have done before and, and, and will continue to do. Uh, because like yoga and like meditation, this is uh, something that it's uh, almost like a Jungian archetype. And if it weren't effective, uh, it would have been phased out of you know, use a long time ago. So if, for myself, it's, it's proved to be uh, life-changing. Um, I can talk about a specific piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Lamont Young, who was a composer in the late 50s and uh, continues to be a composer, I'm sorry, but he's been making music since the 50s after the war, made a piece called Dream House. And that's actually where the title Dream Music comes from. Uh, it's still running, it's been running continuously since 1964 in New York City in, in an apartment. And it's just three sort of tones that are shot into this room. You go in, you lie down, and you feel uh, the sound waves vibrating your body, and you sort of allow yourself to relax into whatever, wherever that takes you. Um, I don't know, again, it can sound flumit or it can sound sort of dodgy, but it truly can be transformative if you let yourself go there. And for me, it's all about subtracting this pressure of time, you know, that you've got to squeeze all this information into these very, very short periods of time. So uh, between myself and my co-curator, Melissa Oftemauer, who does a 24-hour version of this very same thing in uh, New York, um, we have, we have selected some of the best practitioners of this particular form. Um, and uh, among them, Stephen O'Malley from Sun O, a very, very prestigious uh, uh, band. Um, Juliana Barwick, who's a 
a legendary figure from Los Angeles. Um, I could name, I could name, every, actually everybody on the bill is, I would, I would, I would uh, were pretty much my first choice. Yeah, I remember. Which is pretty, we like pretty first. amazing. Yeah. Pretty incredible that we were managed to pull it together. So it's a, it's a, it's an impressive list of people if you know this genre. And it is a narrow genre, but if you know the genre, you're going to want to be here. Uh, why do you think they want to be a part of this? What do you think they... I think that also uh, there... I think as an artist, if you participate in this kind of music, you recognize an op a good opportunity when you see it. And when you see a bill like this, you realize that it's something that you want to be part of. Also, it offers unique opportunities. There will be, and this is like my friend Melissa says, in addition to... Uh, there will be opportunities for artists to uh, collaborate in ways that they will never be able to do again. I'm going to be performing, for example, with my friend uh, Christopher Berg and uh, Joachim Nordwall, um, and we're going to do a special thing. Uh, my friend Angel Dorian is going to uh, perform with Stephen O'Malley. That will never happen. I mean, it may happen again, but it will be the first time that they've ever done that. Um, and that's what the audience should know, is that they're coming to an event that will only happen once. And it's based, since it's based on largely on improvisation, within reason, um, this is a singular event. So you're seeing something that will only happen once. In a way, it's like live theater, there, and there's, there's risks involved with it. And you can feel that sort of, there's a very uh, creative tension there, if you see what I mean.